Why are you guys here? Wait, well, I'm still, I'm still turning lights you, on. You so many. Me. I think it's because you missed me. You've been gone for a month, and what? you've been back for 24 hours, and you're like, you guys should come over. So, <laughs> yeah. That, so here's the backstory, Jimmy. Hold on, before you do that, let's do these hunt takes 100%, because they're flickering like crazy. Okay, yeah. how do you do them? It's just distracting. Oh, check this out, Jimmy. There are discus eggs on the filter pipe. Figures. Oh, wow. I like how the round rocks are green, too. Oh, look at that. It's filthy. No, oh, we got to turn the light off. <laughs> I don't mind it too bad. It's kind of what I figured it would look like eventually, except for the front glass. So the whole backstory is collected in Peru, got back, got the fish three days later, left to bring Luca and my wife home from San Francisco. Because she had lived there for work. She lived there for work. We yeah. had an apartment down there. We were getting rid of the apartment and moved back here. While I was in San Francisco packing my wife's stuff and getting a truck and all of that, my daughter found a place to live in San Diego. So I got back from San Francisco. Three or four days later, I'm back in a moving truck driving to San Diego with my daughter. From Washington. From Washington. Not, not, from, not from San Francisco to no we had just come yeah, back san diego from san francisco. and then i've been back two days since so since peru that puts it about seven days i've been home i do have a good friend that is very good at, at feeding and and checking things out he did some of it my daughter did some and my wife did some of it so you will see the stickers on the tank that's basically the turtles eating that's basically um how how I mark the tanks for feeding. And the sticker being red, I'm guessing, is six cubes of blood worms. Blood worms, yep. 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 And I, I tend to feed a little bit, I, I tend to feed a little bit lighter when I'm gone. You know, the tanks don't become polluted. You know, did you do any maintenance when you got back from Peru? I had no time. Okay. I was taking care of the Peru fish. So this, this might literally be more like six weeks of yeah. you out of pocket. Six, seven weeks, I'd say. So. I turn the light up. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. And I don't know, did we do that on the festival tank? Not yet. The plant tank, uh, just don't show this to Lizzie. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's just going to take scraping the glass, yeah. killing the snails, maybe a little bit of pruning, and we'll be back in business. What is maybe we should do a follow-up to the video, like in a two weeks or what? <laughs> how, yeah, okay, that's a good point. How long do you think it's gonna take you to get back to the Dean quality? So here's my thing. Basically at this point in time, I feel every filter needs cleaned. But I will say, you know, over here, fish from Peru. This is my new favorite aquarium you have. Every year we're like, should we take these? Nah, should we take them? Nah. Yeah. And now that we're at home, I really wish I would have gotten some. I've done that. They look way better in it. This will, I, okay. This might be one of the few fish that looks better in an aquarium than it does in, in the, the wild. wild. Yeah. yeah. I, I normally agree. it's the opposite. You rarely see them in a shop. Because no one buys them normally, or at right. least that's the perception. No one right. ever asks. Do you have festivals? Never happens. But this, this is like a fish that's sort of, kind of across between a discus and angelfish. I was thinking Grammy and angelfish. Oh, Grammy maybe? Yeah. yeah. Um, the yellow's really nice on them. Yeah, I like it. And, and I believe that the yellow's gonna get more pronounced and also I think they'll get a little bit of blue. Thank you, um, 3M, for your... You gotta get that, like, yeah, even his signs down. Man, you are, <laughs> you're a run down, Dean. <laughs> it's right oh, here. Man. At least it didn't break, I guess. No, well, it does have a little crack, but it's nothing. To, your life's falling apart. It actually looks amazing in here. It's because you probably had the lights off the whole time. There's algae and crud everywhere. Yeah, but not nearly like. Not what you would think, but. but like this is from this bulb. That's, that's from that bulb, that. right. Yeah. And that's the light that's on the most. It's crazy how just one light bulb in a room affects the algae. Like that's, right. that's actually kind of fascinating. Well, I used to have one that was more pronounced and this tank would literally get a line huh algae below nothing above um these are angels in here not very many this tray is oh it's kind of pleco it's either leopard frog or it's no it's not leopard frog this might be um yeah i think that's wubba masters 
And this is just uh, more um, stir base. Nice. I want some stir base. Yeah, well, we will have some because behind Jimmy, those two tanks are full of them. Nice. Oh, yeah, look at them. I didn't know what we're going to do with them yet, but I want <laughs> all of those. Baby discus soon to be in the store. Ooh, in the store, huh? I think so. That's I wonder, crazy. I could set up a tank for stir buys and those. That's the perfect tank. I just don't have a tank for it. He's giving away tanks. Yeah, okay. I don't have a space. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have space? What do you mean you don't have space? I'm saying we would have you to set up a tank. Five million gallons of water plus a pond. I know, but something has to move. And we you, gotta you set definitely have up. to put a heater up for a discus tank. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't want to do them in like just a 40. I have to have it be a bigger tank. Yeah, they'd have to go into 75 at least eventually. Yeah, I don't have one of those yet. But remember when I was talking to you about we eliminate 240 breeders and you put a 125 there? I was just thinking that too. And that still could be a possibility. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. Yeah. Rice fish just have not done well outside this, this year. And I think the, re, the, the picture that I'll probably have to send to Jimmy is the one where... All of the mops and plants are out. Yeah. And I think what's happened is raccoons oh. have, have figured out that the rice fish lay their eggs and the eggs are salty. Huh. I want to know who wrote the note. Is someone taking care of the fish room getting shocked in this tank or? I wrote that note. I see. You want to do it? I'll do it. It's not a big shock. Oh, it's not. It's not a huge shock. It'll get, attacked it, by the fish. it'll get you on your fingernails first. Yeah, I'm not feeling it really. I mean, I know that feeling when you can just feel some current. I'm and not really feeling it. Well, feeling. hold on. Let me touch my arm. There you go. Yeah. No, still. Usually yeah. that's the one with metal racks. That's yeah. That's one of the reasons I didn't build metal racks at the store is previous fish stores and all of that. That's the, you, you hit your elbow and then you touch. Oh, there we go. It. it got me there. Now when I touched this little metal yeah, screw, that's where it. I got the little... So, yeah, because this has. I've paint. had it where it really gets you, but that open metal got me. Yeah. So we won't talk tinge. about brands right now. <laughs> we'll just talk about both of those tanks actually have shocks, and they're both the same heaters. They're both round, tubular shaped heaters. Uh oh. I can't are, even see them. That so are black know. in color. I mean that maybe that same one that Randy just had. Yeah, that exactly. Oh, that one. Oh, that one. <laughs> So when I got back yesterday, the leopard frogs had, one of them had a female trapped in that cave right there. And now there's eggs in there. Nice. Oh, these are leopard frogs in here. You probably nice. have to get it with the reflection. I like those. Um, in here, there's more leopard frogs along oh, yeah, with the- scattered everywhere. Yeah. All right, so enough for everybody to take home today. These are wobbins and leopard frogs. So right on top, that's a wobbin. That's wobbins. Yeah. That's, I only say wobbin because I couldn't pronounce the real name. Oh, there's leopard frogs down there too. Nice. Oh yeah, these guys are a little bit bigger. Yeah, those are ready to go. See, we could, we could sell some or auction, auction some. Oh, look, there's some in there too. Oh yeah. Wow, there's a lot in here. That's size for me. So, okay. so there have been some things happening even when I'm not here, right? Mm -hmm. The room all auto water changes and I can control those timers wherever I have Wi-Fi even when I'm out of town. If like whoever's taking care of the fish says, oh, you know, the tank on this, this was all cloudy, then I could just run an extra water change cycle on that tank. And are these the last year? Black, oh, yeah, no, I've got black rams here, there, there, there. Okay. And um, I think I'll set some up to spawn again. Yeah, you have the, you get them in the store again, they'll yeah. sell like crazy again. So these guys are ready to go to the store. Uh, let's just see. I think there was. I think the three ninety sevens might. Good come. lord, that's, that's a, a lot big of big three ninety seven. <laughs> we got a lot of koi angels. We got to sell. This shirt is awesome. I don't know what it is, but it's awesome. I know, I, I just got that shirt and I haven't wore it yet. Right. You want to see what a mess the outdoor ponds look like? Yes. Oh, no. I figured Did you, you leave the sponges on the floor and stuff? <laughs> no. Oh. It, well, here, here, they're right here. Because uh, the guy that takes care of them, he says, I found these on the patio. 
It's two. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just pork is true. How do you know it wasn't the guy taking care of Fisher <laughs> that did it? I don't think he eats pork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here's the... Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. I always do it this way. You notice a lot of thank yous. Yeah, yeah of course. You. Yeah, thank you got you. to. And and so this is the number when they go up to the freezer. You take thirty bloodworm cubes. This is kind of crazy because think of the amount of money that's being spent every day in your fish room when someone else like you got to pay them and all that. But thirty is that 49? 49, 49, 15, and eleven. So how many cubes total? Is that? That's going to be like eighty. Uh, so ninety-five, one hundred and six cubes, and what is it like? 30 cubes per, like, the about, thir about 30 per pack, yeah. Yeah, so you're feeding three to four packs, because the, the baby brine don't come in as big. Yeah. So probably four packs of frozen food a day. That's You're looking at, like, 20 bucks a day in food, basically. Yep. Dang. If I'm feeding them, like, for breeding and stuff, I might be doing that twice a day. I also feed lots of dry food. Yeah. I so mean, yeah, there's more so than they will that. not get yeah. frozen food every feeding when I'm here. Yeah. If I was doing this, I pop them all out mm -hmm. and then go to the tanks. My daughter, she's like, no, I do all these, then all these, then all these. I said, but then you're walking all over the place. She says, yeah. yeah. But that's, she says, I can do it in 15 minutes. That's why she keeps it straight, I guess. Yeah. So. Luca Bazooka? Oh, is that the. You want to go outside? Let's go. So, before I left for Peru, there was about this much of whatever this stuff is, mm -hmm. and there was a few of the... I can't believe you allowed duckweed pets. out here. Is that duckweed? Yeah, yeah this is all duckweed over here. Well, see, there was no duckweed in there, except duck there also might... Also, the raccoons here. dropped it off. Wow, we'll get the away. Been, I mean, because I've been really careful about not allowing duckweed. I'm not getting fry like I got last year. Last year at this time, I had well over 400 fry like this. This year I have maybe... It was also way hotter this year. At least the USB air pump survived the heat. Wow. Feel this one? Feel this one. It's that thermal mass. There's more water here. It's warmer. Wow. Or did you put an Aquion heater in here? <laughs> no, I think there's a heater in that one. <laughs> oh, well, that would make sense then. Or I just wanted to say thermal mass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, once I got to put those nerd terms in there, get the street cred back. Go somewhere. It's not in the house. We're, we're going to talk with Jimmy today and maybe Corey too about the, um, the fry system. We kind of glossed over this many times. Everyone I else feel has like. done an in-depth thing except for me. And the, this, this fry system has evolved for over 30 years to what it is now. Um, originally, plastic bowls. Um, like right. the floaty one we made? Yep. You know, like this. Floating them in a tank. Dripping water in. I've used all sorts of different trays, all stem from when I used to raise discus artificially, tons of them. I had a countertop where I had five gallon tanks, 18 tanks long. Every one of them had a, ho a hole in the back, but my tanks were all made out of scrap glass that I made myself. So they had a hole in the back where I just forced um, a plastic tube in that went to a drain. Above it, I had a shelf with 18 five-gallon buckets. <laughs> Things have evolved, right? Corey's laughing over there because <laughs> he's thinking. So then every day I would, I would start yeah. an airline tube drip from each bucket into the tanks to change the water, to keep the water clean because when you're feeding fry, you tend to create a lot of mess. You do what you got to do. Yeah, right. I've evolved it with, this is like a 20 long um, and my trays um, sit on top. Each one um, has water supply coming in, which I can control on or off. And I also like to use air where it's just enough to keep that, that surface scum. Yeah, like biofilm. 
uh, so that if I drop food in there, it will sink or it will float or whatever I want it to do. The whole tank is filtered with a Eheim canister filter down here. So that filters the whole tank. Um, I usually keep it um, at about 82, 83 degrees. Um, a power head is powering what I call the water supply tube. Okay, so the front one here, this is water supply. You can see water's coming out. I can control it up, down, or off, or even just a tiny drip if I want. It just depends on what type of fry, what's in there. Uh, the one behind is the air supply, and that's what's supplying these tubes. The rest of it is like a box type filter. Um, it's made out of clay or whatever instead of plastic, and it's just filled with crushed coral. My buffering. I still need to buffer my water or I will go completely acid. And I actually use this thing because I, I had it, I found it in a box, to try to keep the bottom a little bit more clear of debris. The way it works is basically when the fry have hatched, or in some cases when they're just eggs, I can put them in the tray, I can run fresh water in, they hatch, and uh, so I move this moss out of the way, you'll see a bunch of little catfish fry in this particular one. My theory about this whole thing started years ago when I was watching um, my discus raising their fry by themselves, and also a pistos. And they would always keep the fry into a close knit group, a really small ball, like maybe a two inch space. And you could see them twitch their fins and the fry would all move. So my thought on the fry system is I'm keeping the fry close, in a close space close to the food. So they're not having to search out a whole 40 gallon breeder or 20 gallon long for food. They only have to search out the tray. I used to keep fry or fish in the bottom. It does not work so well. This will handle six of the smaller trays, four of the larger trays or a mix. And if you've got all of the trays full and you've got fry in the bottom and you need to net any of those out, you gotta take all the trays out to catch them. So I don't do that anymore. I get asked this a lot, you know, where do you get the trays, how do you make the trays, etc., etc. Just for you guys, just for you guys, a uh, members only video about how I make the trays and, and where you get them. They can be found on Amazon, but not in the form that you're seeing right here. Check out the members channel and we will put links and stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a boring video, but the people that want it are going to yeah. know exactly how you make that. So. Yeah. And most people skip through it. If you want to see it, it's going to cost you five bucks and check out the other stuff that happens there too. Yeah. And then after you've checked that out, make sure you hit the, the bell. <laughs> That's the notification bell because you want to know what's going on. And then hit the like, wherever that is. And then there's one other thing you have to do. Subscribe.